In this video, we will be assembling the Brinley 42-inch plug aerator with easy store handle, model PA42BH and PA42BHA. Tools required, a half inch wrench and socket, a 9 16 inch wrench and socket, a 15 16 inch wrench and socket, a tape measure, pliers, an adjustable wrench, and gloves. Note, the illustrations on page 5 are to scale. For faster identification of the hardware during assembly, place the hardware on top of the illustrations on page 5. Step 1A. Attaching the side plates. Add a flat washer to each of the 8 15 16 inch by 3 quarter inch hex bolts and from the inside of the tray, pass the bolt through the tray and through the holes in the side plate securing each bolt with a nylon lock nut on the outside edges of the tray and plates. Secure the bolts in place using a half inch wrench and socket. Then repeat this step on the other side, lining up the holes in the side plate with the holes in the tray, adding a flat washer to each of the four bolts and running the bolts from the inside of the tray, through the tray and through the side plate, adding a lock nut to the end of each of the four bolts and securing the bolts in place with a half inch wrench and socket. When tightening the bolts, maintain a distance between the side plates of 43 to 43 and 1 8 inches. Step 1B, adding the mount brackets to the tow bars. Align the holes in the mounting brackets up with the holes in the tow bars as shown. Add a flat washer to each of the 5 16 inch by 1 inch bolts and insert the bolt from the outside through the mount brackets and through the tow bars, adding a nylon lock nut to the end of each bolt. Loosely secure the bolts in place using a half inch wrench and socket, but do not fully tighten just yet. These bolts will be used at the end to level the aerator. Step 2. Attaching the tow bars to the tray. Line the holes in the mount brackets up with the holes in the bottom of the tray and insert the 5 16 inch by 3 quarter inch bolts from above through the tray and through the mount brackets, adding a 5 16 inch nylon lock nut to the end of each bolt. Repeat this step on the other side, lining up the holes in the mount bracket with the holes in the tray and from above passing two bolts through the tray and the mount brackets and adding a lock nut onto the end of both of the bolts. Use a half inch wrench and socket to fully secure both tow bars to the tray. Do not fully tighten just yet. Step three, adding the clevis. First, pass a 5 16 inch by one and a quarter inch hex head bolt through the end hole in the tow bars and add a 5 16 inch nylon lock nut to hold the bars in place. Do not fully tighten just yet. Then, sandwich the clevis halves above and below the tow bars as shown and pass two 5 16 inch by two and a quarter inch carriage bolts through both clevis halves. Make sure the bolts fall on either side of the bolt previously placed in the end of the tow bars, securing both bolts from below with a 5 16 inch nylon lock nut. Step four, adding the hitch pin. Insert the hitch pin into the hole at the end of the clevis and secure the pin in place with a hairpin cotter. Then securely tighten all of the bolts from the last step. And now go back and tighten all of the hardware from steps one and steps two, fully securing the clevis, the tow bars, and the side plates in place. Step five, building the plug spoons. Orient the plug spoons with the back of the spoon facing the non-welded side of the plate. The rounded part of the spoon should also fit against the tube to lock the spoon in place. Line the hole in the back of a plug up with the hole in the tube assembly and attach the plug to the tube assembly using a 5 16 inch by 3 and a quarter inch hex head bolt and securing it in place with a 5 16 inch lock nut. Repeat this step for all eight plugs for each of the three tube assemblies until all 24 plugs are assembled. Be sure to fully tighten all 24 plugs into place. Note that there are two different types of tube assemblies. The two end tube assemblies have one short end and one long end. The short ends will be facing out closest to the side plates. And with the singular center tube assembly, the ends are the same length. Then insert a nylon bearing into both ends of each of the tube assemblies. Step six, 
adding the plugs to the axle. First, add a machinery bushing to the end of the axle. Then slide the axle through the end of one of the side plates. And continue to add a tube assembly, short end first, to the end of the axle. Then add a machinery bushing, a spacer, another machinery bushing, and the center tube assembly. Making sure to reinsert the nylon bearings if they fall out. Then add another machinery bushing, another spacer, and a fourth machinery bushing before adding the end tube assembly, facing the short end towards the side plate. Note, one or more machinery bushings can be added to the end of the axle as needed to eliminate any side play in the axle assembly. Step 7. Adding the handle. Push the axle assembly all the way through the left side plate as far as possible and rotate the axle so the hole in the flat plate faces to the rear as shown. Then add the lift handle assembly onto the end of the axle with the welded tube facing out. You may need to push the axle back into place in order to line up the holes. Then run a 5 16 inch by 1 and inch bolt through the lift handle assembly and through the axle assembly. Securing it in place with a 5 16 inch nylon lock nut and two half inch wrench and sockets. Then place a washer on the threaded portion of the lift handle weldment and install the lift handle by sliding the larger of the two holes over the threaded portion. Then place a washer and the large 5 8 inch hex nut on the threaded portion to secure the handle in place. Then add the 5 16 inch by 1 inch cotter pin through the holes in both lift handle assemblies and add the hairpin cotter to keep the lift handle assembly in place. Then slide the plastic grip handle over the end of the grip assembly. Step 8. Adding the wheels. First, add a 5 8 inch flat washer to the end of a 5 8 inch by 4 inch bolt and slide the bolt through the end of one wheel with the wheel hub extension facing towards the plug aerator. Then add a 5 8 inch flat washer and a 5 8 inch hex nut to the end of the bolt. Thread the hex nut as far as possible while still allowing the wheel to rotate freely. Continue by running the hex bolt through the holes in the lift handle and the axle assembly. Secure the wheel in place by adding a lock washer and a hex nut. Using a 15 16 inch wrench and an adjustable wrench, tighten the nut onto the bolt to keep the wheel in place but loose enough so the wheel still spins. Then repeat this step on the other side, adding a 5 8 inch flat washer to the end of a 4 inch bolt and passing it through the wheel with the wheel extension facing towards the aerator, adding a washer and a hex nut tightening the inside hex nut but keeping it loose enough so the wheel still spins. Then pass the bolt through the hole in the frame and add a lock washer and another hex nut. Using two 15 16 inch sockets or two adjustable wrenches, tighten the outside bolt so the wheel stays in place but keep it loose enough so the wheel spins freely. After both wheels are installed, turn the aerator over to rest on the wheels and plugs using extreme caution. Step 9. Inserting the transport pin. Insert the transport pin into the hole on the same side as the lift handle assembly and secure the pin in place using a nylon lock nut. Hold the pin in place with a pair of pliers and tighten the nut using a half inch socket wrench until the pin is fully secured to the frame. This transport pin allows the handle to be locked in place during transport. To move the wheels in and out of transportation mode, the lift handle assembly will pivot to raise and lower the wheels. Step 10. Adjusting the aerator. Note, this adjustment is made with the aerator attached to your garden tractor with the wheels in the transport position. The final step is to level the tray using the adjustment bolts attached to the mount brackets. To adjust, loosen the bolts and position the tow bars until the top of the tray is level with the ground. Then fully tighten all four adjustable mounting bracket bolts. Congratulations, your Brindley 42 inch plug aerator with easy store handle is now complete. To collapse the handle into storage mode, simply remove the hairpin cotter and cotter pin from the lift handle assembly 
flip the handle around 180 degrees and replace the cotter pin and hairpin cotter back into the lift handle assembly. This easy storage handle allows your aerator to be transported in smaller spaces and to be stored face down on the ground, taking up less space in your garage. For questions, call Brindley Customer Service at 877-728-8224.